So in previous lectures, we've developed the governing equations uh, for for the general nonlinear case uh, of in, in what we've talked about thus far, the total Lagrangian formulation. So let me just give you uh, what we had done so far. So recall the the uh, element level equations we developed. Okay, and they took the form uh, the uh, mass matrix of the element times the uh, acceleration of the element u e double dot uh, is e was going to be equal to the external element force minus the internal element force uh, was equal to some uh, net element force right let's call that equation one okay and what we need to do is to be able just like we did in the linear case we assembled the global system we need to be able to assemble these equations to get to a global system Right, and that global system looks very much like the element system, just without the the uh, subscripts of the of the element. Right, these would be the global matrix and vector values. Right, so um, the mass times the acceleration matrix is equal to the um, the external force vector minus the internal force vector. Right, let's call that equation two. Okay, so how do we do this? Well. Uh, there's probably multiple ways to do it. I'm going to uh, uh, cover here one method, and that's by introducing a connectivity matrix. Uh, we'll call this connectivity matrix LE because it's unique for each element, uh, and it's going to be defined such that uh, we could say that the element nodal displacements is equal to this matrix LE times the global no, uh, nodal displacements, right? So you can kind of see that obviously the LE is not a square matrix, right? Um, so what is it? Where the matrix LE uh, is a Boolean matrix of zeros and ones uh, that maps the global node displacements uh, to the element nodal displacements. Okay? So we can use the complementary operation to, um, to, to assemble the element forces into the global forces, okay? And by complementary, I mean we're going to take, instead of use LE, we'll use LE transpose to, to map the element forces back to the global system, okay? So we can use the complementary operation uh, for assembly. Uh, some places we'll call this gathering. Uh, the element forces into the global force ve vectors. Okay? So how we do this is fairly straightforward. We can say that the internal force vector, and this is global, you can tell I'm not, there's no subscript of E on it, it's going to be equal to the sum over all the elements of the quantity uh, LE transpose, right, uh, times uh, F E int. Right, so this is this is the transpose of the connectivity matrix times the element um, force vector. We can sum those all up. Okay, let's call that equation four, and we have similar um, similar features for both the ex uh, external force vector. Call that equation five, and then the kinetic force vector. It looks a little different. It's the same initial idea. Right, the kinetic force vector. Uh, should be given as uh, the mass matrix times uh, u double dot, right? But let's go ahead and write it out uh, just like we did before and then arrive at that, okay? So we'll have connectivity matrix of the element transpose now times uh, E, the element uh, kinetic um, force vector, right? Which you know uh, what that looks like. That You know we already defined this. Right, so this now looks like um, sum over all the elements of LE transpose. And then this kinetic force vector looked like, um, I'll call it ME for the mass of the, the mass matrix of the element times uh, UE, right? And then, but we have from equation three, we have an expression for UE. So I'll just say from three, Right? We can just substitute in LE there, and now we end up with the sum over E of LE 
transpose times ME times LE times uh, U, right? U is has no uh, dependence on uh, this. It's it's constant for all the elements, and it's multiplied, so we can actually uh, pull that outside the sum and write something like this, right? Call this equation six, and we know that uh, generally, just like in the the element case, this must equal m times u double dot, right? And I should put the, the, this, sorry, I made a mistake. Those should be double dot terms, right? Okay. So where, let's define M. Okay, let's say where uh, M, this is the global mass matrix now, is equal to the sum over all the element mass matrices of the quantity uh, LE transpose right, times ME times LE. Okay, call this equation 7. Okay, well that's all, that's all well and good. Now let's do an example so we can kind of see this in action. Okay, so here's an example. We're going to consider a two element model. So it's going to look like, remember we're in 1D. Okay, so it's going to have two elements. Here's element one. Here's element two. And let's go ahead and label the nodes one, two, and three. So we know that the, what the global system should look like, right? In the global system, we have, we should have a total U vector that looks like uh, U1, U2, and U3. And similarly, we can have an acceleration vector, U double dot, that looks like uh, U1 double dot, U2 double dot, U3 double dot. Okay. And we also can write our, we know what the internal force vector should look like. All right. Should be, we'll just call this F1 int, F2 int, and F3 int. Similarly for the external force vector, F1 external, F2 external, and F3 external. Okay. We also have the mass matrix, right? The global mass matrix. Uh, it's going to be a 3 by 3. So we'll have uh, M11, M12. Usually the mass matrix is symmetric, so we'll just assume that here just for the sake of writing. Let's say it's symmetric. M23. M33. Three, three. Okay. And let's collectively call these equations 8. And then now let's talk about what the elements look like. Okay, so for element 1, uh, we have that, that uh, displacement vector, the nodal displacement vector, uh, in, in uh, terms of the global, looks like U1 and U2. Right? The acceleration component looks like u1 double dot and u2 double dot. Our internal force vector, I'm going to put an e there, our internal force vector looks like, um, so we have f1 internal, it's the element, and it's the element 1, and then f2 internal, it's the element, and it's element 1. Okay, and then similarly, if we can write for the external, so F1 external of element 1, F2 external of element 1, okay. Let's write the mass matrix. And the mass matrix here is going to be a 2 by 2, so it's M11, uh, and I'll put up here of element 1, M12 of element 1, M12 of element 1, and M22 of element 1, okay. Let's collectively call those equations 9. Okay, so we can look at this and see that... Okay, so let's look at this. We should be able to now figure out what the connectivity matrix should look like. So we want to somehow map the vector u1, u2, u3 into the vector u1, u2, 
for this element, right? So let's let's see what that what we would need to do. Okay, so uh, we can write then that L E of element one looks like the following one zero 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 one zero. And you can confirm if I multiply that times u1, u2, u3, I return get the vector that I've defined there. So let's call that equation 10. Okay, now let's do the same thing for element 2. Okay, so let's say element 2. We have, in this case, ue that now is going to look like uh, u2 and u3. And then uh, ue double dot is going to be u2 and u3 double dot. Okay, and then we have uh, the for in internal force vector as, as expected. So we have F2 now, internal, from element 2, this is at the element level, and F3, internal, that's again at the element 2, and similarly for the external force. Okay, we can write the mass matrix in a similar way, and let's go ahead and collectively call these uh, equations, equations 11. Okay, so now we need to write down our connectivity matrix so we can look at that and see that Le of now element 2, uh, we want to be able to do that mapping so we end up with the quantity that looks like this. Okay, and you can confirm that if I multiply this quantity times u1, u2, u3, that vector, I, I recover my element 2 displacement, right? So let's call this equation 12. So now let's go ahead and do the, the quote, the assembly process. Let's take these element quantities and, and uh, compute the, the global quantities, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to use equation 4 to compute the internal uh, force, okay? And so what does that look like? That says that F int, and I'm going to write it out just like it, the whole thing says. So it's F, it's LE transpose, right, which now looks like 100100. Zero, zero, one, zero, zero. Uh, times the vector uh, F1 interior of element 1 and then F2 internal of element two, uh, 1. Okay, and then I have the second element. The second element looks like 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. That's LE transpose. Okay, times now we have F2 internal of element 2, and then F3 internal of element 2. Okay, and let's uh, let's sum those up. So that that equals. So the first term is just F1 internal of element 1. The second term looks like F2 uh, internal of element 1 plus F2 internal of element 2, the sum of those forces, right? And then this last term is just F3 uh, internal of element 2. Okay, so that's your solution. Equation 13. Let's, we can do, write the same thing for the uh, external force vector. Okay, the only thing that changes is I change all those internal, the INTs to EXTs, okay? So I can say, follow the same procedure. Uh, we can compute the external force vector, okay? And that's going to look just like the other. F of, F of EXT in the global is going to be F1 of EXT of element 1. And then the sum here for the second term, right? F2 EXT of element 1 plus F2 external of element 2 and then this third term will just be F3 uh, external of element 2. Okay, let's call that equation 14. The only thing we have remaining is the mass matrix. Okay, so we can compute that as follows. Okay, so we can say M, right, this is the global, we, we have this sum, and so the first term is LE transpose, which we, which we wrote before was 100100, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 
times the mass matrix, which we said was M11, M12, M12, M22, and these are, this is from element 1. Okay, times LE again, so this, this now becomes uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, right? And then the next term we're going to add is the second um, element, which had the LE transpose of 1, 0, 0, 1. And then a mass matrix that looked very similar, just uh, relabeled. So these are all from element 2. And then we multiply it times its original, which looks like uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, right? Uh, so we can then go ahead and let's, let's, do the, let's do this first multiplication. So I have the term, I'm going to just leave this out, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay, and then I'm going to, multiplying a 2 by 2 times a 2 by 3, so I'm going to get a 2 by 3, right? And this looks like M11, M12, M12, M22, and this third column has zeros in it, and these are for element 1. Okay, and then it's going to be plus, this, I'm going to leave this out here, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and now this quantity is going to look like I'm going to have zeros in this column, uh, so this will be just M11, M12, M12, M22, and these will all be of element 2. Okay, now let's keep, let's keep going down. Let's go ahead and do this multiplication. When I do that, I get, I'm, uh, I'm now multiplying a 3 by 2 times a 2 by 3, so I should get a 3 by 3 matrix, which is the same size as the global, and it looks like M11, M12, M12, M22, all of element 1, right? And these are zeros. And then this term, the second one, is going to look like I'm going to have zeros in the first column, and zeros uh, in the, in, sorry, first row and column. Uh, and I can write then that this is M11, M12, uh, M12, M22, all of element 2. Okay, and I know that uh, in a 1D case, it's really easy to assemble uh, vectors and matrices. And so I, I know you don't need to follow this procedure. I'm doing it so that you can, we, we have something that we can write down that's, that doesn't have 55 terms in it. And, um, but you can see the procedure because we can apply this procedure literally to, to any arbitrary um, uh, assembly. Okay, it doesn't have to be 1D. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, sum these up. And we end up with our final mass matrix, right, which looks like M11, uh, M12, M12. These are all of element 1. And then this second term, we have to add them. So this is going to be M22 of element 1 plus M11 of element 2 in there, right? Uh, and then we have a 0 in this corner. This is just M12 of element 2. We have a zero in this corner still. This is also just M12 of element 2. And then this is M22 of element 2. Okay? And we'll call this, um, call this equation uh, uh, 15. Again, I know that this is a pretty simple example. You probably didn't need uh, any sort of uh, construction to do it, but, but it's, a, it's a general procedure that you can uh, code up pretty easily. Um, the other thing you can do is, as you can imagine, as the matrix gets larger, these these um, connectivity matrices are primarily zeros. And so what you end up with is, from a, an implementation perspective, is something that looks a lot more like a lookup table. But you get the general idea of how we go about um, uh, uh, constructing these both vector and matrix terms uh, in the global array. So what are we left with? Now we're left with what we had originally. Let me scroll all the way back up to the top. Okay, so we, we basically now have equation two. We know from previous lectures how to compute equation one for all the elements. Now we know how to assemble them all together uh, into something that looks like equation two. Now the next question is going to be, how do we solve those equations, right? How, what's, what's the procedure? So that'll be the topic of the next lecture is how we go about actually solving these uh, this global system of equations.